Good windy morning to you. This is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm in my front yard permaculture food forest garden in Portland, Oregon, gardening zone 8B, and I'm gonna try and make a quick video here before the rain comes back. I have one quarter acre in Portland, Oregon. If you are new to my channel, I have 42 fruit trees and I have no idea how many berry bushes and shrubs and vines and canes anymore and one nut tree and my entire garden is permaculture food forest and a small vegetable patch so I wanted to update you all I had gotten a lot of questions about my bush cherries and I want to do an update this morning about a couple of things that are kind of going sideways for me and some struggles that I'm having. So not everything is perfect. Obviously, like my garden is, I mean, I love it. I think it's a paradise. I love it here. It looks wild and so many things are flourishing and doing well, but that doesn't mean everything goes perfectly. And I want to share with you some things that are not going that well. So keep in mind, this was 10 years ago. This was basically cardboard because I had just sheet mulched the entire garden. So the garden is 11 years old, but that first year was basically spent building soil. Most of that first year. So this garden had sod and no topsoil. And when I say no topsoil, I mean no topsoil. There was sod and immediately rocky subsoil with no organic matter in it. So I have focused on being a soil farmer more than anything else. I have planted comfrey everywhere. I brought in manure and compost early on just to give me any topsoil. And then I have focused on bringing in dozens of loads of wood chips. And I mean big chunky pieces of wood that can break down and form that rich humus that we're looking for. So when I have problems in my garden, I try not to spray with organic pesticides and fungicides. I don't use any, any inorganic ones or any chemical ones. I don't use any inorganic fertilizers. And I want to make a video on that soon. There's a lot of inorganic salts that folks use as fertilizers that are really damaging for the garden. So I'm focusing on building soil fertility, but understand that my garden was very depleted in nutrients and the microbial ecology was severely damaged. So I still have problems and I continue to work on feeding the soil, building the soil ecology so that the soil microbes and mycelium can have um, can be built up and develop those beneficial relationships with the roots of the plants and communicate and feed the roots of the plants. So part of the reason I think I have some disease pressure in some parts of my garden is because the soil has not healed yet. So let's look at some things that are not going so well. This is um, Juneberry. Let me see if I can get my... There we go. This is Juneberry, also known as Saskatoon or Serviceberry. These I got from Burnt Ridge Nursery. This one is, I actually still have the tag on it. I try and keep my tags around. This is called Northline. Burnt Ridge specializes in, in terms of their service berries, in service berries that are grown for good size and flavor and food production, and they are dwarf. So you may have seen service berries that are super tall but north line is is a dwarf one so here's what they look like when they're just about mature service berries are like a mix between a blueberry and a cherry and an almond but they get cedar apple rust so this is a problem i have had on all of my june berries you can see it deforms the fruit and it causes this orangey fungal growth so these also I mean I live in Oregon there's cedar everywhere cedar apple rust is ubiquitous but if I can help promote a strong plant they can help battle it themselves better so what I'm finding is over time I get more and more healthy fruit and less that is diseased 
but it is something that damages probably this year 50% of my June berries will not be edible and I will pick off and destroy the rust damaged fruit. Rust also can impact quince quite hard. So that's something that's not going perfectly. I don't use copper fungicides, I just remove infected fruit. And I understand that I may need to plant more June berries in order to get enough yield, right? Okay, I have over here, I have uh, five plum trees and I have a Shropshire Damson plum as well. My plum trees can struggle from aphids. This is a common problem in Oregon and they can damage the fruit and they cause the leaves to curl up. And um, what I'm doing for that is I'm bringing in all the ladybugs and just trying to promote healthy insect predators and I do not spray because I don't want to damage the beneficial insects. Also, you can see here, I'm trying to get it to cooperate right there you get bacterial canker, which causes this ooze. And the solution to that is cut back the damaged part of the plum. And you can see I already cut back some and I haven't cut back enough. So when we're looking at bacterial canker and other things, again, feeding the soil, building a healthy root system so that the plant is less susceptible to disease pressure, that's really important. Things like inorganic fertilizers salinate the soil and weaken the plant over time. The fact that many of us are gardening in areas where the soil ecology was really damaged, we're gonna be facing disease issues and pest issues while we continue to strengthen the soil. So thinking about slow, steady small solutions thinking about observing and interacting and looking at those permaculture principles how am i making long-term changes to the health of my property so that my trees can have optimal health all on their own and for me that's really continuing to repair the damaged soil that i have through chop and drop by encouraging a fungal dominated soil using wood chips. Trees love a fungal dominated soil and grass loves a bacterial dominated soil. I want a food forest, I wanna encourage the beneficial fungi. Okay, so let's look at one more thing that's not doing well. Folks had asked me for an update on my bush cherries, lots of folks. A few years ago, I put in bush cherries. There's going to be a link, put a link over here. I have two bush cherries in the romance series. I have a Romeo and I have a Juliet. Some of the benefits of bush cherries are they grow on their own rootstock, so they're not grafted, so they come true from suckers. You can share them with your friends, spread them around your garden, all on your own. They grow, they top out at six feet. You don't have to get on a ladder. Fun fact, I have broken both my legs and I do not like to get up on a ladder because my ankles don't work. So I'll get on a step ladder, but I won't get on a tall ladder to pick fruit. So I want something that's low to the ground I can get with my feet firmly planted on the ground, barefoot and my toes dug into that soil. So I have bush cherries. They're supposed to be hardier and more disease resistant than regular cherries. Unfortunately, I have gotten some problems with them. In Oregon, cherries and actually plums, can uh, any stone fruit can get what's called brown rot, which is a fungal dieback. And I have gotten a little bit of brown rot this year, which has damaged my cherries. So let me come in here and show you what it looks like. It's sometimes called like a brown blight. What you get is, it looks like this. You get, oops, excuse me, sorry about that. You get, I'm gonna, pick it off you get dieback of the tips starting at the tips of the plant and the leaves get brown and crum crunchy and it can also damage the fruit then that is produced that is set on the end so again treatment for that is when it's dormant is copper fungicide which is organic but it is not 
organic doesn't mean it's good for you and it doesn't mean it's good for the environment. So again, thinking about building my soil health, this plant gets infusions of comfrey tea, um, both as a foliar spray and in the ground. And I'm hoping that that's gonna help it. Both this one and the other one in the other part of the yard are getting those foliar sprays and, and amendment of um, comfrey tea. They're also getting extra kind of loving care of a little bit more worm castings worked in underneath the mulch and just being really diligent about that chop and drop so that I'm building that soil ecology. So yeah, not everything goes perfect in a permaculture garden. I mean, it really is paradise, but it's not immune to pathogens and pests. And the best thing we can do if we don't want to be using um, chemical inorganic fertilizers that are really not good for your soil and if we don't want to be using pesticides and herbicides and constantly be treating the symptoms we need to get to the root of what's going on and feed the soil ecology so we have strong healthy resilient plants that can bounce back from that pressure of pathogens and predation and can continue to produce for us all on their own. So I hope that helped you all. If you have any questions, feel free and leave them in the comments. I'm trying to show you more some of the things that are going really well and also some of the things that just the ugly side, right? The things that aren't perfect because nobody's garden is perfect. But also when we look at things in permaculture, right, we design for solutions. Everything in permaculture is an opportunity for learning and an opportunity for growth. So when I see those disease pressures, I think I need to be feeding my soil better. I need to be supporting my trees better. So I don't want to be discouraged and I don't want you to be discouraged if you see things that are struggling. It's just a way of communicating to you, the gardener, that there's work to be done. If you enjoyed my video and you got something out of it, I would really encourage you to subscribe to my channel and share it with your gardening friends so they can learn more about gardening in the city and they can learn about permaculture and orcharding and building healthy soil and blooming where you're planted, right? I'm in the city and I have chose to bloom where I'm planted and that means restoring and regenerating. And that's a process and it's a great process to participate in. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm gonna get out of the rain.